Hello guys, my name is Pierre Scatch and today we're going to see what's the difference between has one and has many and owns one and owns many. First of all, let's go to our project. I have a people console application and let's see the logic, the weird logic of our project. We have a person that has an ID, a full name and the first let's go to a our vehicle uh, in our application for some reason a person can only has one vehicle but they can have a lot of houses also it has one address and a lot of credit cards now in the context of our application an address and uh, the credit cards they only live inside the person we can treat them uh, separately like if that was an aggregate and these two properties lived only inside the person but also we have a vehicle and some houses and uh, we can create and read houses and uh, vehicles even outside of uh, that uh, person class so the vehicle has a vehicle id and if we go to the vehicle it also has a person and its id so an owner and an owner id and the same for the house it has an owner id and an owner because we want to treat them as separate entities but for the credit card it doesn't make sense to have an ID and a person only for the entity framework stuff since it's not required for our business logic and the same with the address and also the address is a record uh, with three properties a city a street and the zip code that made it a record because it could also work as a value object so we can see how we can treat them with entity framework and finally let's go to our configuration I have a house configuration which I only say that the ID is the key of the house and the same for the vehicle so back to our person configuration I have configured the person to has one vehicle and each vehicle has one owner and the phone name key is the owner ID and for the houses the person has many houses with one owner and the phone key is the owner ID but uh, for the address since um, we don't have a foreign key or anything i just said builder owns one address and for the credit cards builder owns many credit cards now you might say how will that be mapped in our database since we don't have uh, a key and uh, also you may ask how you can configure the properties of let's say the address for example we cannot go to the configuration and add and uh, address configurations that will not work because that does not work with owns but what we can easily do is configure inside uh, the person the address properties so we can say for example that uh, the property city has a max length of let's say 20 for example and uh, actually we can do the same for the other properties for example the street and since we are here let's make the same and for the zip code as well so let's add the configuration and see what will happen and I will use the entity framework or UI plugin to do that so all I need to do is right click go to tools entity framework or add migration and press OK and we have our migrations folder and let's go and see the migration so it created the people table and it has an ID, a full name and for the address it did not create another table but actually created the three properties inside the people table the address underscore city, address underscore street and address underscore zip code and as you can see they have a max length of 20 so what the uh, entity framework did when it used the own one it is that uh, took the properties of that owned entity and put them uh, inside the same table as different columns and give them uh, a name of the owned entity underscore the property and that's that the behavior that we get with the owns one and uh, for the credit card it created another table and put the uh, Two more columns a person id which is the foreign key and also an id uh, with an auto increment value of one and it set uh, the primary key to be the combination of uh, the credit card id and the foreign key person id 
So it uh, created two shadow properties and we call them shadow properties because they don't exist in our code base, they only exist uh, in SQL Server but Entity Framework knows how to treat uh, these tables and these address columns and uh, map them back to our person entity in our code. Now let's go to our program.cs and as you can see in here I take a new instance of an AppDB context and actually let me show you the AppDB context. It's that AppDB context, we have a DB set of person, of house and for vehicle because that's the three entities that we can configure separately than the others. And uh, back to our program I create an address with city of Athens street, my street and zip code uh, 11111. I create also a new vehicle and the make is the Bugatti because that's what I drive because of the YouTube money. I'll create two house and two credit cards and then I create a new person uh, with uh, my name as a full name, the address that we previously created, the vehicle that we previously created and the two house and two credit cards that we previously created. Then I add this person to my personal DB set and then I save the changes. So first of all let's go and update our database. Okay, now let's run our application. Okay, so now we should have a person in our database and let's go and try to retrieve it. So let me remove all this and say var person equals with await context dot people dot first or default async. And now I don't include anything, so if we wanted the houses, for example, we could say include x dot houses or vehicle or whatever we want to include, but I will leave it as it is. And actually, let's have a console dot read key so that our application won't stop. And let's put a breakpoint in here and let's try to debug that. Okay, now our person, as you can see, the vehicle is null and uh, the list of uh, houses is empty because we didn't include them but uh, the others, as you can see, is there and also the credit cards and that's because we used the own and not the has so another thing to have in mind is that when you use own you don't need to include anything they will all be included by default and that's the difference between the has and the owns. Now the owns makes a lot of sense when it comes to value objects or entities that live only inside the, an aggregate root because you don't need to have uh, IDs or entities or other stuff that are related to entity framework inside your domain layer that uh, they probably shouldn't be there. So that was it. If you like this video please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a nice one.